Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to Paul's Flight Deck. So it's finally happening, the first tutorial. So after looking at the different options I had to interface the actual hardware with the SIM, I decided to go with SimVim. So the cool thing about SimVim is there's not really a lot of programming to do. So they've done all the hard work for us. All we have to do is go grab the plugin, install it, upload the firmware to our Arduino, and then uh, hook up your switch and go into the sim and test and see if it works. So we're just gonna be basically following their written tutorial today. So what you're gonna wanna do is go ahead and go over to simvim.com. And then we're gonna go over to, we're already at start, so this is what we need. So if you scroll down a little bit, it says getting started simvim install. So in order to actually install it, we wanna go over to the Patreon site. So I actually am a Patreon and I, I donate monthly but it's worth it for all the work they've done for me already. It's gonna save me so much time in coding. Uh, you as well, if you're following along and building your own cockpit. So right now, the latest version is SimVim Cockpit version 0.9.29. So you're gonna to wanna to download the SimVim zip and extract it to your X-Plane folder. And so mine is gonna be in my secondary hard drive under Steam, Steam Apps, Common, X-Plane 11, we're gonna go down to resources and then plugins. So wherever your X-Plane 11 game's installed, you wanna to go to resources, plugins, and you want to extract SimVim, it's right here. So you should have a 32-bit, 64-bit, AVR, access config, another config.ini, a data.config, and a SimVim.dat. So once you have all those, you're good to go. So now we need to launch X-Plane go into our plugins folder and actually update the firmware on our Arduino from the SimVim plugin. These are some of the things I used to complete the first tutorial for SimVim and some of the stuff you're gonna use a lot throughout the entire build, but I wanna go over a couple of them real quick. So we've got these Vice Grip Quick Wire Strippers which this is some 22 gauge wire. We're gonna use a good bit of that. That's the most common wire, wire we will be using throughout the build. So all you do, let's get this to focus in. Come on guy, let's go in slow. You can focus, you can focus, you can do it. There we go. So you just squeeze and it automatically strips the wire for you. Stay focused, no, but anyways, you can see here, this is multi-strand wire. It's the cheapest. Um, I would prefer the solid uh, core wire which is just one big fat piece of copper. But yeah, so anyways, it's pretty handy. It's, it's really quick. I got this off Amazon and they sell them at a lot of stores, especially like your home specialty stores, Home Depot, Lowe's. Put that to the side. The next thing I wanna talk about is this cheap switch. This was about three or $4 at the big box um, home specialty store today. And, oh, come on. It won't even focus on these big words. Let's go, guy. There we go. So this is a two post switch and on the back, if you look at it, it shows that when the switch is in the off position, the terminal that corresponds to that on the bottom of the switch is for your load or your power wire. And the other one is your line ground. So that's a good thing to note. So I've already, before I started the video, went ahead and connected two um, wires. And if let's see if we can get this guy to focus. See the off there. I have the power just like on the box and then the grounds on the other one. Anyway, it's just a really, I love that the way these switches feel when you click them. Anyways, we'll need this switch and then we'll need an Arduino board. Now I've got both of them here because I have two. We're going to be using the Mega 2560 R3, which I think is their flagship. It has so many pins and it's a little more powerful than the, the Uno R3, but the Uno R3 would work for this too. You just have to select this particular board to upload your firmware to in the plugin step with SimVim. I'm gonna go ahead and put this guy to the side. This actually, the um, the R3 came with my Eligu Super Starter Kit and I really recommend this. And they actually have one for the 2560 as well. Um, if you can get one for the Mega 2560, you might wanna get that one because this is a much better card. I probably wouldn't even be using this um, R3 Uno, sorry, Uno R3 in the actual cockpit build, I don't think. I'll be using all Megas. Probably use between six and 10 of them. I don't know how many yet. Anyways, um, we're gonna need a breadboard. This actually came with um, my kit. And then we're gonna need these two um, jumper, male-to-male -male jumper wires. Uh, this is how I'm doing it, at least for my setup. 
So anyways, let's jump back over to X-Plane and get SimVim going and we'll get the firmware installed on our Mega 2560. So now we want to start a new flight. I'm going to load the Zebo 737 because it's my favorite plane. Um, we're just going to match real world uh, weather and time for right now. And we're going to be at the Atlanta airport. So we're going to go ahead and start flight. And I'm going to probably going to fast forward it so you don't have to sit through all this. It takes a while to load. Okay, so we're back in X-Plane. I've got it paused because if I unpause it, you get to hear the generator running, which is kind of loud. And for right now, I'm going to pause that and let that be quiet. So what we want to do is go over to plugins and then SimVim cockpit. And we're going to go to firmware upload. And this is based on the fact that we've never done this before. So I'm going to go here. It says, make sure your controller board is not connected to USB and click next. Mine is not. So I'm going to go ahead and click next. Now plug the controller board into USB and click detect port. Now I'm going to go ahead and switch the camera back on real quick and show you something. So I don't know if this is normal. Um, let me zoom in a little bit so we can. But for my particular board, if I just connect USB, which is all I have to do for the Uno card, nothing happens. I don't get any window dings that the driver's trying to install or that a USB has been connected to my computer. Nothing. However, I did pick up um, this Uno, I'm sorry, <laughs> this Eligu um, external power supply for my um, Mega 2560. And with this, it works just fine. I'm going to check on the forums and see if that's an issue with my card because I thought the 5 volt supplied by the actual USB 3.0 slot would be enough. So plug it in, boom, we have a green light, we're good to go. So back on the computer, we're going to go back to detect port. All right, so I am not using an Ethernet um, card on top. There's a, there's, I forgot what they're called, but they're different cards that actually snap into the top of the pins. And I don't, I don't think they're bridges. I can't remember. It's not important. We'll get to that later. But I don't have any of that. I've got a master board, and it's a Mega 2560, and that's on Portcom 4. We're going to upload the firmware. <coughs> All right, firmware's been uploaded. So now we have another window and it says, okay, we've got a little spinny thing down here, which means it's still working. So we're gonna let that go. But the good news is it did find our USB SimVim cockpit firmware, um, or the, sorry, the device to put that on. Man, it's late. <laughs> I'm talking circles around myself. So it's done. There's no more spinny thing. Open this, blah, blah, blah. Okay, we're gonna close this out. Now we're going to jump back over to the SimVim cockpit page and have a look at the next steps to do. We're just going to follow their tutorial basically. We're going to get rid of X-Plane for a second and we're going to pop up the page. So here I'm going to actually scroll in a little bit so we can read a little bit more. So what we've done, we've done the firmware upload, we followed the steps. The USB to port was detected. We did not need to check the Ethernet box because we didn't use it. We clicked upload, blah, blah, blah. We waited. So now it's telling us we need to connect the toggle switch to pin five and ground to ground. The pilot's, the what switch? Switch, the pilot, I guess the pilot switch state will change in accordingly with your switch position. The onboard LED on the controller board will change its state. Pilot heat is on or off. It's just a typo, um, no big deal. So basically what we're gonna do, let me go ahead and we're gonna jump back over to X-Plane. Let's get rid of this page. We're going to jump back over to X-Plane and we're going to do this. So what it means by pilot heat wiring. Oh, that's right. I'm paused. So sorry for the loud volume here. Um, I can't do much about it because we won't be able to hear the cool click. Let's go up here to pilot heat and I'm going to zoom in on this. Uh, let's ah, come on. There we go. So what it wants us to do, and we'll go ahead and pause this. We're going to turn this off. Oh, it's on. I'm going to turn that off too. Okay, so what we're going to do is go ahead and pause this again so we have to listen to that. Okay, so let's let's get back in here to our Arduino. I ran into a technical issue um, while I was trying to get the breadboard going, so I've had to restart. That's okay. Anyways, jumping back into this. This is a breadboard. This is for prototyping um, different circuits you might want to build 
and interface with your Arduino card. So to explain this, this simple, little simple explanation here of how this works, you've got the left side, A through E, plus this positive and ground. And then you have the right side, which is F, G, H, I, J. And then you have power and ground over there as well. So looking at this, um, there are two different sides. This is a side and that's a side. In order to bridge uh, connections on the two, you would need to use a jumper wire going from one to the other, you know, to give um, any connection on this side connectivity to the one on the other. So about the, the ground and power, ground and power, every single pin will be connected to ground and every single pin on here is connected to the same power. So for instance, for this instructional, if we look at our card, we're looking at the right hand side where the USB is. We've got a ground here, GND, and then we've got pin five down here, which we're gonna have to use both of these if this thing will focus. So what we're gonna do is take the green wire and we're gonna stick that into ground. Come on guy, go in there, there we go. And a good way to check is on the side, it's actually written to, if this thing will focus for me. So it's really easy to tell if you're going in the right one. So then we'll do the same thing. We'll go ahead and take this and put it into pin five. So there we go, we got pin five and we've got ground, just like the instructions on SimVim said. So ground is going to actually go to ground. So we'll just pick any ground slot. It doesn't matter. Any one you pick is fine. Does not matter as long as it's on the ground side of this trough. So then for the pin five, this is going to go basically just to the red wire on the switch. So we're just going to pick um, the first slot in 25 on the left hand side of the board. All right, so we've got ground again, doesn't matter. Ground can go anywhere. Um, this wire can go anywhere too. It's just, it had the, the connection for this is going to have to go on the same line. So let's just say we pick line 25, then we got to make sure that the red wire on uh, the switch is in the same line 25. If we decide to pick 30, then this wire needs to be in 30. That's how a breadboard works. It's all a grid. So um, we're gonna connect our ground first. I always connect ground first. And this is this can be a little difficult. So anywhere in the blue, again, I can connect this anywhere in blue I want. So I'm just gonna put it right next to this ground and hope, it, hope it's actually making connection because it, it's really, really thin, flimsy. So, um, I've got four open spaces here. I can put this in any of those open spaces. I'm just going to pick one. It's on line 30, just like my red wire. So now I'm going to go ahead and shrink the camera a little bit so we can look. Oh God, that's not the camera. All right, so here's the moment of truth. We've connected ground to ground. We've connected pin five to pin five. We have a good connection with our ground here, and we have a good connection with our um, power here. So what we're gonna do now is hit the switch and probe A, well, you can't really see, but probe, let me see. I wonder if you can see my cursor here. Probe A should work. So here we go, on, hey, hey. Oh, there we go, we've done our first switch. Isn't that awesome? Now we haven't made a, a panel in a box and, and put it all in there yet, but the concept works. Um, you and I both have just made our first working switch using the SimVim tutorial. Big shout out to SimVim. Thank you guys so much for your hard work for making this so easy for us. And look at that, we didn't write a bit of code. See how fun that was? All right, well, hey, that's it for tonight. And I'm looking forward to making another video soon and we'll get into more switches, maybe an encoder or two. I've got some of those coming in tomorrow. But I really appreciate you guys tuning in. Please like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Thanks. Bye.